In this video, we're going to talk about Ampere's circuit law some more, but now in differential form. To recap our journey so far, remember that in the, oh, and also in this process, we'll also introduce the curl vector, the curl operator. So if you recall, in our, in our electric field journey, we start out with something that was Coulomb's law. And then from that, after we had some knowledge about the point charge and how it relates to electric field, we had Gauss's law in integral form. And then from there, we had Gauss's law in differential form, uh, where in order to where we shrunk the integral form concept into a single point. And then in order to do that, we had to introduce you to the divergence operator. So this is kind of equivalent to uh, this, this portion of what we're going to talk about. Let's start with a basic formula, and we can also try to work in an intuitive explanation before, before we continue. So remember, the integral form is that h dot dl is going to be equal to the current enclosed. Right? Now the differential form for that is the curl of h is going to be equal to the current density. So this is Ampere's law in circuit form. And what that the, the general concept is similar to what we had with Gauss's law, where remember in Gauss's law, we said that a closed surface, if you add up all the arrows coming out of a closed surface, you end up with the charge enclosed, and then you shrunk that down to a point form. In this case, you had the the concept where if you had your h dot dl, you you if you do this line integral and it's a closed line integral, which means that you can draw a surface out of it, you get the total amount of current that's coming through that surface. And all we're doing is we're just saying let's just shrink this down to the smallest size possible to the point where it's a point. And then what that that operation can be described by the curl, so the curl of h, and then as a result, once you've shrunk it down to point form, remember uh, in the case of Gauss's law, that changes, you go from q to volume charge density. In this case, you go from the current to current density. Let's start with an intuitive explanation, and then before we dive back into the nitty gritty of math. The, the curl operator is basically a uh, a swirl meter. So uh, one one analogy that I like to think of is uh, is like if I I just visualize like a, a paddle. So this is this is a paddle. If I put it in the water and there's circulating currents in accordance to the right hand rule, where the direction of the paddle spin is indicated by my fingers. Uh, if you put it somewhere where there's a where there's current swirling, uh, this paddle is designed such that the faster it spins. The, the more this little little flag will pop up. So, that, so if you put it in somewhere where there's no spin, then the flag will be all the way in. If you put it somewhere where, there's where the water is really turbulent and this thing is spinning all over the place, like say in the, right in the middle of a whirlpool, then this will spin really quickly and the flag will poke out really tall. Um, another, anal another analogy that uh, maybe, maybe uh, some of you might relate to is, uh, we like, I think uh, wine always makes things a little bit better in many situations. So another analogy that would be appropriate, uh, that, that would be useful is like, it's a little bit like a wine bottle opener. So if you, so remember, if so in, like the corkscrew wine bottle opener. So you poke this in and then you have your handle. And the more that you turn the handle, when you turn the handle, the cork feels a force that's going upwards. Right, and also, uh, you know, the, the faster you turn the handle, the the faster the the velocity vector of the cork is that it comes out. So if you were to combine the two analogies, and I have, you know, a, a bunch of little wine bottles, and it's sitting in some swirling water, and then over here I have my magical hydro-powered wine bottle opener. Um, the the water in this case is a magnetic field, and so the amount that it's turning this corkscrew and pulling the corkscrew out, the, the ve velocity vector of the corkscrew is kind of like the current density. So you can think of it as a spin meter 
uh, or in this case, this overly elaborate uh, wine bottle underwater hydro powered uh, corkscrew opener analogy, whatever works for you. But I think that the main concept intuition is that you're, you're trying to find a mathematical operator that tells you the total amount of swirl going on at, at any given point. And you're indicating that magnitude through a vector that is perpendicular to the direction of the swirl or the plane that, that defines that swirl um, in accordance to the right-hand rule. Well, let's clear this up and move on. Next, let's start by, so now that we have a bit of an intuitive understanding, let's define this curl operator for the different coordinate systems. And then we can look at a very simple example to see where this equation comes from. Remember, in Cartesian coordinate systems, you can, if you define this del vector as d by dx in the x hat direction plus d by dy as a differential operator with their respective unit vectors, in the case of Cartesian coordinates, it works out. So, in, so this expression, again, it primarily uh, works well in the Cartesian coordinate system. You can think of the curl as equal to the determinant of this matrix, x, y, z, d by dx, d by dy, d by dz, and then you have your hx, hy, and hz. So that kind of, so if you evaluate this determinant, uh, you can get the expression here where d by dy hz minus d by dz hy. So let's look at the x direction. You have the x hat vector, and then it's the determinant of this 2 by 2. So d by dy hz minus d by dz hy in the x direction. Plus, and then if you look at this y, um, so you draw a line like this, look, evaluate this 2 by 2. You have uh, d by dx hz, uh, d by dz hx. But don't forget, you have a plus minus plus. So you actually want the negative of this determinant. So let's just work that negative sign in. You'll get d by dz hx minus d by dx hy plus d by dx. So now you, you look at this z vector and you evaluate this 2 by 2, you get d by dx hy minus d by dy hx. And that gives you the, the value in the z direction. Uh, I'm hearing some tears. I think it's, uh, it's getting close to lunchtime where, where uh, young souls are more fragile. But everything should be under control. And uh, let me just quickly write out. So you have a similar process in the other coordinate systems. Uh, in this case, I'll just write it out here so that you have that as a reference to look at. But I think that since this is complicated enough already, we'll look at a simplified case in the Cartesian coordinates uh, just to give you a taste of where this came from. And the rest, I think it's more useful just as a reference. So as long as you have access to this equation and you have a basic inkling of where those equations came from. I think that's good enough for the scope of this course. Over here, I'm showing through the magic of post-production and screen capture, we'll just take a look at the cylindrical and spherical coordinate system. Uh, so as you can see, the, the formulas are a little bit uglier. And really, it's, it's not necessarily hard. It's just a matter of making sure that you're very careful in terms of how you break out these steps and that you, op you, that you incorporate these various operations in the order that you're supposed to. So if, you ha if you're working in spherical coordinates, uh, figure out what the phi, the r, and the theta components are, and then make sure that you take these operations that are in parentheses first before you differentiate, and also make sure that you do this, uh, different, this uh, difference first before you multiply these out. But in general, uh, as long as you run these in the, in the correct order, uh, you should be OK. There's a derivation for these in the appendix. But I think that uh, conceptually, if you understand how it's operated in the simplified case for Cartesian coordinates, which I'm about to talk about, I think you'll be OK. Uh, just make sure that 
you, you know where to find these equations if you need them for these other uh, coordinate systems.